Dear all, welcome back to Ecojo's YouTube channel. Dear learners, today we will discuss about environmental economics. Okay, this topic is studied under plus three third year six semester DSC three paper. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Before going to discuss about environmental economics, we should know about environment. What do you mean by environment? If we talk about the environment, then it refers to the surrounding. Okay, our surrounding just in which we are living. Click. It deals with natural world, natural world of land, land, air, water, and forest, etc. In brief, we may say that environment is the sum total of living and non-living elements, and their impacts. on human behaviors and human lives get the living elements means what living elements means those are also known as biotic elements that is known as living elements for example animals plants forest fishes or birds or as well as we all are. okay non living elements if you talk about that then it includes water land sunlight rocks or aids etc okay so environment means what environment means just it is the sum total of both living and non living elements or their impacts on the human life or human behaviors okay then come to the uh, point of environmental economics what do you mean by environmental economics here if we talk about the environmental economics uh, as name suggest us this is the sum total of environment as well as economics we all know that uh, meaning of economics that is nothing but the allocation optimal allocation of scarce resources to achieve our goal and satisfaction that is nothing but our economics but by adding the environmental word in the uh, in the uh, wording or in the term of uh, in economics it deals with what it deals with it it creates a new branch of economics which deals with impact of economic activities on environment in which we are live okay that means what environmental economics is nothing but the uh, another branch of economics like micro and macro economics it also a branch of economics which deals with all type of impacts or externalities or consequences of economical activities like consumption production distribution and actions on the environment which are uh, which is need or which is required for our life okay <clears throat> it focuses optimal allocation of natural resources and uh, uh, environmental damages environmental damages like air pollution water pollution uh, soil uh, quality and toxic substances and uh, global warming clear in brief we may say that environmental economics is a part of economics which focuses on the rational benefits of a rational benefits or welfare maximization by choosing or by allocating the environmental resources in such a way or in a optimal manner okay then come to the origin of environmental economics the origin if you talk about the origin of environmental economics then it starts from 1960s after the industrialization in western world okay after the industrialization in western world uh, the people or the world uh, come um, come to touch with environmental problems different type of damages like air pollutions water pollutions and noise pollutions etc okay after that uh, a person or an economist uh, named named as herman edward dale was presented some concepts like stable economy sustainable economic growth and non economic growth these terms or these concepts give birth to the environmental economics so that they known as is father of environmental economics okay and uh, herman edward dale is known as the father of environmental economics clear <clears throat> this term environmental economics was based on the new classical beliefs or new classical approaches new classical economist says that or they believe that environmental economics deals with some particular issues 
like inefficient allocation of natural resources. Market failure, negative externalities and management of public goods. Here inefficient allocation of natural resources means what? Means that the availability of natural resources or the available natural resources is not allocated in optimal manner. So how can we allocate it in an optimal manner? That is the concern point of environmental economics. Market failure reveals that inefficient allocation of the resources where demand and supply is not uh, uh, become uh, get equal to each other or where we are unable to achieve the Pareto optimality condition that is known as market failure condition. Then how can we achieve the market failure? Uh, how can we achieve or uh, close or the uh, uh, how can we solve the market failure problem? That is the concern point of environmental economics here. Like that negative externality. Externality means what? Externality means third party impact. That means if uh, if the action of one person affects to the another person, then that is known as externality. It may be positive or it may be negative. Positive externality is not the matter of uh, environmental economics, but negative externality is our um, core point of the environmental economics. How can we solve that? How can we measure out the negativity externality of an action? Okay, these are the some issues uh, where are uh, another issue is that management of public good, especially free rider problems. How can we solve out? Okay, these are the concepts uh, uh, which, are, which are the core point of environmental economics according to the new classical economics approaches. Let then come to the uh, nature of environmental economics. What is the nature of environmental economics? Is it a positive science or is it a normative science? Is it a micro level study or macro level study? What is the nature? Is it a dynamic or static? Is it a social science or pure science? If we talk about the nature of uh, nature of environmental studies or environmental economics, then we may explain it uh, by following the heads. First one, positive as well as normative one. Environmental economics is, is a positive as well as normative economy. That means what? It helps to find out some cause and effect relationship of different issues, environmental issues. As well as it helps to formulate some policies or some actions or remedies. So, environmental economics known as both positive science as well as negative science. Then come to the uh, point of micro and macro level study. If we talk about the micro and macro level study, then it, 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 it deals with both level of study that is micro as well as macro. That means what? If we talk about the air pollution or water pollution of a particular city, then that is nothing but the uh, level of study. Uh, what is the level of study? That is nothing but your micro level of study. Environmental economics deals with particular that area only. But if we talk about increase in temperature, that is nothing but your macro level study. So that environmental economics deals with both level of study, micro as well as macro level of study. Then come to static and dynamic. If we talk about the static and dynamic, then we need to uh, deal with some viewpoints of classical economist and new classical economist as well as modern economist. According to classical economist and new classical economist, environmental study by environmental economics deals with only welfare maximization conditions by using the available resources, natural resources. So that this is a static in nature according to the classical as well as new classical economist. But according to the modern economist or according to the modern economist beliefs, they says that environmental economics is a dynamic one. Because of why? Now because it deals with optimal allocation, optimal resources allocation of minerals, forest, water resources and fossil fuels or all type of natural resources. How can we achieve the optimal allocation to get a maximum satisfaction or maximum welfare? So uh, environmental economics 
is both static as well as dynamic in nature also. Then come to the science of society. Environmental economics is a science of society. It is a branch of social science also. Because of why? Because it deals with managerial aspects of pollutions and resources allocations. As well as it deals, as well as it deals with human beings, interaction between human beings and the physical surrounding. So, environmental economics is a science of society, or it is a branch of social science. Clear? Then come to the question that is the scope of environmental economics. What is the scope of environmental economics here? If we talk about the scope of environmental economics, then we be uh, we may discuss it uh, by following questions. First question is uh, what? First question is what are the economic and institutional uh, environmental problem causes of environmental problem? What are the problems? Or what are the cause? behind the environmental problems or damages like air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, soil degradation, soil quality degradation, global warming. Why these problems are taking place? One question. Then second one is how can we assess the economic importance of environmental degradation? What is the environmental degradation and what is the role and uh, what is the impact of the environmental degradation in economical point. Then third one is our, third one is our, uh, how can we design economic policies to slow environmental degradation, uh, to control the environmental degradation? What are the policy measures? If we talk about these three questions, then these three questions may be solved out by some uh, points that that are the first question can be solved out by studying market failure or government failure which refers to inefficient allocation of resources by taking the help of or uh, <clears throat> by taking the help of resources allocation optimal resources allocation we may solve out the market failure condition or government failure conditions or we may achieve the uh, or we may control the causes behind the environmental problems or damages. The third, second question comes from the economic values of environmental uh, degradation or environmental resources. What is the value of clean air? What is the value of purified water? How can we measure out it? If we can measure out this, then we can also measure out the values of environmental degradation. So we need to discuss about the different uh, methods or different policies regarding the values measurement of environmental resources. Then third question may be solved out uh, by taking the help of different type of economic tools and, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, and policies to control the environmental degradation. Third question basically deals with policy formations to eradicate the damages or to control the damages of environment through economical activities. Okay.